So let's pick up where we left off. We're using the fundamental principle of counting to answer this question of given that we would have three kids, what's the probability of having exactly two boys and one girl? Um, we reviewed a couple of the basic rules of probability and then um, using the fundamental principle of counting, we were able to get a count of all of the possible uh, permutations. Um, meaning that if you have three kids, you could have a boy, a second kid could be a boy, and then a third kid could be a boy, and, or some other combination, or you may have possibly all three kids being girls. Um, so that's how we left this last time. Now, we ended up seeing that there were one, two, three ways we could have two boys out of the total of eight possible random events, giving us a total of three out of um, the eight possibilities. So the probability of the proportion would be three out of eight or 0.375. Now those random events that we looked at, you know, having a boy and having a girl, um, it was a situation where it could be success or failure, a yes or a no, um, a miss or a make, but it was one of two options. Um, uh, situations like that are considered a Bernoulli trial, where it can be either one of two um, possibilities for this random event and so the things that we do here will apply to other situations such as field goals shooting a field goal or shooting a um, shooting a bow and arrow and there's a certain probability of hitting a target um, you can miss or make and how many could you possibly make after three attempts something like that so now, we're going to look at this at, um, another way. These um, three scenarios, let's make this a little bit th thicker. These three scenarios that we've seen looked something like this, right? If someone were to have kids, it might be a boy, a boy and a girl. But um, what we're going to do is say that two boys and one girl could look like this, or it could look like this. So in that scenario, right? This is the scenario when we're going to say that order does not matter. And when you look at these, it's still two boys and a girl, two boys and a girl. We're not concerned with the order in this particular um, scenario. So on one hand, you can look at this scenario um, as just a bag of letters. Right, when order does not matter, um, you can think about it as just being a bag of letters. And those are considered um, combinations. And we're going to see that there is a formula that's going to help it's going to going to help us work with uh, combinations. Um, when order does matter, um, it's going to be a different situation when order does matter, then, um, then this series that we have, uh, boy, boy, girl, is not exactly the same as boy, girl, boy. Um, and in that case, it's not, we can't look at these as being equivalent bags, or they're certainly not the same combination. Um, 
maybe one way to think about it is not so much a bag, but maybe a line of people. And these are clearly two different lines or Q, U, A, U, E, two different cues. So you can think about unique cues um, when we're looking at the idea of order not mattering. And so when order, um, I'm sorry, when order does matter. So when order does matter, um, these two certainly aren't equivalent. And we're looking at a Q and we're going to get the assistance of another formula um, in PR, um, which we'll get into um, a little bit later. We have, we certainly have already seen some of this with the earlier conversation when we looked at um, several different candidates for a club and we were looking at president versus vice president and how many different combinations um, we could come up with and certainly order it mattered. Um, so remembering that we talked about presidents and vice presidents is going to help us um, think about um, and remember when we're using uh, the different formulas, president versus vice president, helps us remember that we're looking at um, not combinations, but um, permutations. Now, let's go back to try and answer our original question um, where we wanted to know how many different ways could you have two boys and a girl? Um, is there another way we can get this answer of 0 0.375? Um, so let's take a look at that one. Um, if we look at this, let's go back up to the top. These events that we were looking at here, I've given them labels. And these events um, here are labeled event A, B, C, D, E, and so forth, right? So we have several different events that are labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F. So what we're really looking at and trying to answer this question in, in an alternative way is what's the probability of uh, event A, well, not event A, I think it's actually event B, because that's when you have two boys, or, I'll do it like this, or event C, or event E, because those are the, uh, the scenarios where we have exactly two boys. What's the probability of um, any one of those events occurring where there are exactly two boys. Or actually, the, um, you know, where we're looking at just, simply, just simply counting the number of boys and getting exactly two boys out of the total of eight. So we were able to get this visually, but let's see if we can use the simple rule of addition to get that same answer. So the probably, probability of getting that event um, B or event C or random event E. One way to think about this is um, what distinguishes them is the, um, the grouping. Um, which, yeah, right, so even though they're in different orders, so either we're going to get um, bag B, or we're going to get the second, this other grouping where there are two boys, or we're going to get this third grouping where there are two boys.
So for, let's take one of these in particular, the probability of event B. Just that alone, right? Not looking at the group, that's one probability. But what is the probability of event B? And if you look at event B, um, this was the, uh, the, the set of values where you had exactly this scenario, two boys and a girl, two boys first and then a girl, right? That was event B. Um, since the probability of having a boy was 0.5, we know that since this is a Bernoulli trial where it can only be a boy or a girl, the probability of having a girl is the complement of the probability of having a boy. So it can only be one or the other, right? Since the probability of a boy plus the probability of a, of a girl, one or the other, that covers 100% of the options. So um, the probability of a girl and the probability of a boy are complementary, meaning that the two together make up the entire universe of possibilities. So those two are complementary. Um, and if this changes if the probability of having a girl is, for example, 0.48. We're going to have to revisit this and look at the probability of having a boy as being 1 minus 0.48 or 0.52. Uh, but for right now, let's not um, go down that path. Let's go ahead and work with what we have. So the probability of having a boy is going to be the product of having a girl first um, and then the probability of having um, so a boy first and then the probability of having a boy the second for the second child and then times the probability of having a girl um, so this situation is looking at the probability of having a boy and a boy and a girl. Um, the simple rule of multiplication tells us that when, when we're considering multiple events that are independent, um, that we are, uh, we can use uh, the multiplication, simple multiplication rule for probability. So the probability, so we're assuming that after the first child, um, whatever that gender is, that the second child is not, um, that probability doesn't change. Um, and then for the third child, it doesn't change based on the, on the previous two children. So that value stays fixed and that these three events are independent. One doesn't, um, one probability doesn't change given what's happened prior to it. So we're not looking at conditional probability here. We're looking at independent events. Um, the probability of having a boy was 0.5. And the probability of having a second boy was 0.5. And the probability of having a girl was 0.5. Right? So 1 half times 1 half times 1 half is going to give us 1 eighth. So for just one of those events, the probability of having a boy was 1 eighth. And if we go back and look at our table here, each one of these will in fact be 1 eighth. And if you sum them all up, you would have 8 times 1 eighth. We would cover 100% of the possibilities. So it makes sense that um, um, you know that, that if we were looking at each one of these having a 
probability of one eighth of occurring that all eight would cover 100% of the scenarios. But now what we're looking at is simply the probability of B plus the probability of C plus the probability of E, those three events. And since each one of those is an eighth, um, the probability of those three events um, summed together is three-eighths. So remember that each one of those had two boys and one girl. So that gives us our 0.375. That's the probability of having um, two boys and one girl. And that is in fact consistent with what we saw here before just through observation that there were three ways of having two boys and one girl. So that's an attempt, uh, and a simple example of using the multiplication rule. Um, but what if we change this up a little bit so that um, the probability of having a girl is just a little bit higher, just slightly higher than that of having a boy. So if the probability of having a girl is equal to point foo, point, point 0.52, the probability of having a boy is going to be 1 minus that point 0.52 or 0.48. Now this is going to change our numbers a bit. So if we look at the scenario that we had before, um, the probability of B, which was two boys and then a girl, in that particular order, probability of having a boy and a boy and then a girl is going to be equal to um, 0.48 times 0.48 times 0.52 and if you drop that into your calculator you should see um, a number, uh, what would that be, um, 0 0.119808, um, and in fact, um, probability of B, where you have two boys and a girl, or the probability of C, or the probability of E, those three are exactly the same. Um, so since those three are exactly the same, the probability of any, um, the probability of having or seeing those three occur, where it's B or C or E, where each one of those represented two boys and one girl, those will all be exactly the same, even if the order of the product um, with the factors um, changes. So in that case, it's going to be th three times 0 0.119808, which is 0 0.359424. So that's a little bit different than the 0 0.375.
So we were able to, let's go back to this, we were able to get this 0 0.375 two different ways. One was just through observation, and the other way, this way, the second way was using um, the, uh, the rules of simple multiplication. And then we took it a step further and said, well, what happens if that probability changes? Um, what we're going to see next is there's um, a way of thinking about this in a formula that's going to help us um, generalize this to larger um, and other scenarios. On your calculator there is this um, binomial PDF function that you can use where you can indicate the number of trials, the probability of having a success, and then the number of successes if we're calling a success um, the event of having a girl. We're going to see that, um, or this, we'll leave it like this, if it's the probability of a success is the probability of having um, a girl was 0.52 and we said two boys and one girl, so let's make that a one. Um, and if you look at that scenario, you'll see that that is going to give us the same number that we calculated before. And if you use the previous probability, where you're trying to um, the probability of a success is 0.5, and the number of girls is 1. Um, it's also going to give us that same probability. Um, so we'll see that later, but for now what we've learned is that we can use the uh, multiplication rule um, in combination with the addition rule to calculate probabilities.